I needed to have other women I could talk with about even the possibility of spiritual leadership. I invited women to my home to begin to express ourselves in a very safe environment and then eventually to begin exploring what our leadership might look like. And it doesn't always look like masculine leadership. It's taken something to get me to begin speaking out loud about how I feel connected to the divine. Having a small group of women um, has really changed my life and the way I live to have people to listen to you and reflect that you're seeing and encourage you. Just to go out and be speaking about feminine leadership with anybody I can, just bringing it up and speaking as authentically, precisely, with an open heart, just engaging people in conversation. Every conversation we have with everybody is opening the field to people seeing more and more what the feminine leadership looks like. There's nothing too small. I picked up the new copy of the Atlantic Monthly, and the cover says, The End of Men, How Women Are Taking Control of Everything. Having magazine articles like this out there is an opportunity to talk to women, animate them, point out some of the strengths, just bring out some of the uh, data. It animated me. One of the questions in here is, what if the modern industrial economy is simply more congenial to women than to men? Rianne Eisler and The Real Wealth of Nations, which is her latest book, she, again, makes the distinctions between organizing society around a domination model or around a partnership model. And she, of course, does exquisite research on uh, an economic friendlier to women. She has coined the term caring economics, an economics which values women and children and the natural world and the elderly. A feeling that I had in my solar plexus of a flutter of danger, of women r rising so fast, they stir up edges of resistance and resentment among men. Will not be helpful. In some ways, I believe, not our intention. It is not our goal as women of spirit. Be aware of the how we manage this uprising as women, how we carry ourselves as the energy naturally rises. And the second piece that got stirred up in me is I am having an experience this week of being aware that not all women lead in ways that are different than men and then the patriarchal model. And I've had a week where I have come face to face with an old model of leadership um, in some ways, an old message of divisiveness and polarity being carried very vis visibly and effectively by a woman leader. There is a complexity to this emergence of the feminine. The prevalent model of leadership in our culture has assumed a zero-sum game, that in order for one to win, another must lose. This hierarchical bias in, is antithetical to many of women's interests and intuitions, as well as nature's systems, where symbiosis and mutuality are as often the norm as competition. Women are discovering collaborative win-win structures of leadership in which all participants are enriched by their participation 
regardless of their positional power. In fact, women often lead from behind or alongside their colleagues, and less often from out in front. In this definition, being a leader doesn't necessarily mean asserting dominance, but rather initiating collaboration and catalyzing enthusiastic engagement. Women focusing on self-awareness, on each person's unique assignment in life, their spiritual assignment in life, and their particular passion, prioritizing connecting across differences, and igniting others using a whole systems approach that is egalitarian, inclusive, and sustainable. Um, we've met many women who would choose a patriarchal model who might be able in their uh, capacity to out-macho the men in domination leadership. But we also, I think, have a breadth of illustrations of the kind of leadership that Barb described in that beautiful quote. It's a complex world, but it's also a hopeful world. I can intentionally now put myself in places and with people who now will listen to me. And it makes me feel more powerful and more um, alive.